I have set up now the system via the Scala wave from the previous video to have a comparison between linear and nonlinear systems. So we have here a shorter coil from, uh, from Professor Mail, and they have a frequency currently at 3.19 MHz. I use a DMM for each individual coil to measure the voltage we achieve via the bridge rectifier. And I use also two current probes, which I then compare later on to show the difference. If I start that up, so it's 3.19 megahertz. We achieve 30 volt on the receiving side and we have 9.92 volt on the transmitting side. If I now connect here, and that is a cable I connect before to the input side to the primary over here. And we have currently 36 milliwatt power consumption. We're getting a nice curve on the oscilloscope, but we have 41 milliwatt. So we have a linear response here that when we are um, pulling more energy, we actually have for its reciprocal pulling more energy from the power supply because we have it here more concentrated on our receiving side. We see we have 39 volt but only 7 volt um, reduced. If I look at the current currently, if I look at channel 4, that's purple, it's 3.1 milliampere. Let's take that out for a sec. And it's 3.2, I would say. It doesn't make a big difference um, from a value point of view, put it back in. Um, channel 1, yellow is the input voltage. It's at 4.3, 4.4 volt. I take it out. It's 4.6, 4.7. Doesn't make big difference either. Green is 12 volt currently. If I put it back in, it's 70 volt. Also, not a great distance. So what I want to show you currently now is I take now this current probe in here, put it on the other side and compare the values. And you can see they overlap, they're identical. So we have 5.6 milliampere on that side. So this is our comparison currently here on a scalar wave. We have a small change, yes, in the output. We align the wave curves, but we draw more energy out from the power supply. Now I'm going to change the system into the scalar torsion field. I have now changed the system to the scalar torsion field and we're going to uh, repeat the experiment we have done before with the scalar wave system from Dr. Meil. So the frequency is a specific frequency we're using, we have used before, only at this frequency it will work. Currently you see on the DMM from the transmitting side, 3.8 volt, and you see six, around 6 volt on the receiving side. This comes from the driver which is currently already running to the amplifier, but that's about it. So I'm going to energize that now, we have 4 to 3 volt, if I do that now, it will settle in, so I have the waveforms on our oscilloscope, oscilloscope separated, so we can easily see the values. So I'm reading out for you on the transmitting side, the yellow line, 1.3 volt. On the receiving side, green line um, with 15 volt. We have on channel 4, red, reddish rosa, we have color depends how you can see that on your monitor. We have 1.1 milliampere and I will show later on when I move this current probe over, it's about 5-6 milliampere here as well. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to connect now here to the primary coil, the wire, and we go down to 1 100 microampere on the power supply goes down to zero and we see the curve. So what we're going to read now is we have 600 millivolt 
available on the transmitting side and the current is down to I would say around 600 micro ampere. We are pushing currently 200 milliwatt into the system and we have 35 volt now that reads out on a DMM 75.8 volt here on the receiving side and 15.5 volt on the transmitting side. So the power has to come somewhere. I was talking about entanglement but there's also might be a most, more simplistic um, explanation. The power is, is moving between both coils forward and backward via the earth ground wire and the stored energy from that system goes back in here. However, we don't see that to that extent. The only thing we can see is the power which resides in the primary coil and which moves from the primary coil to the bridge rectifier and that's what we're going to see. So I can measure only the voltage which is currently available after voltage drop, which is here only uh, 600 millivolt. And the current is almost completely gone. So I'm going to move now the current probe over to the um, receiving side. Then we can read actually the value out. It's 5 to 3 volt. And I move that up so that you can see that they completely overlap. They completely match, so we have identical values. They are correctly calibrated to show the identical value. So we have 5.4 milliampere over here, the 35 volt, and we have on the other side this value. If you if you want to see now quickly how that is in terms of power really available now on the transmitting side, I can move that over quickly in a mathematical form. I changed it here to the source 1 and here to the source 4. So we have 330 microwatt. So that is how much power is fluctuating on the transmitting side. 360 microwatt. If I take now the wire out, it goes back to 2 milliwatt. And I compare that back to our systems we had before. The source is 2, and here we have the source 3, 240, 150 milliwatts. So we have much more power available on the system. So this concludes my comparison between the linear and the nonlinear system between normal scalar waves. That's an example. We could have used normal solenoid coils as well and the scalar torsion field um, system I did design. I thank you very much for watching. Until the next time and goodbye.